Hello, my name is Ian McChesney and I'm presenting some work that I've been engaged with along with my colleague, uh, Dr. Raymond Bond. Eye tracking analysis of code layout, crowding and dyslexia, and open data set. What we have been trying to do um, in, in this paper is make our small contribution to the to the practice of uh, making our making experimental uh, data available to the wider research community, uh, to the eye movements and programming community, and maybe even uh, further afield. And the context in which we're doing this um, is as follows. So for a few years now, we have um, been studying um, how programmers with dyslexia read and understand program code. And um, our initial work in this regard has been presented here at EMIP uh, and elsewhere. Um, but one of the mistakes that we made in setting up that study was that we did not make the appropriate arrangements, the ethics arrangements for publicly sharing our data set. So in some of the follow-up work that we are now doing, uh, where we're looking at the possible effect of code layout and of crowding on how programmers with dyslexia read code, um, for this work, we were very careful uh, to make sure that everything was in place to enable um, the full sharing of our data set. So in this paper, uh, this is what we're focusing on. Uh, we've begun to put out some results. Uh, just re recently, we presented in, in some detail some findings at ICPC. Uh, but really in this paper, our, our focus is sharing our experiences and our thoughts on making the, the data set fully open. And there is a reference in the paper to the, uh, the data, and it is uh, publicly available on Figshare. Um, by way of brief background, uh, for a number of years now, the scientific community in general and the computer science community in particular have been reflecting and debating on how we do research. And in computer science, um, there is particular concern and debate around the uh, what is called the replication crisis. And Andy Coburn and his co-authors have published a very good um, discussion on this just recently in Communications of the ACM. Uh, and if you haven't come across it, um, I'd really encourage you to, to have a read at that. And part of the, uh, or some of the recommendations that, that they make are, are things like, you know, promoting the pre-registration of a study, something even which workshops like this can be quite um, useful um, in facilitating. Encouraging the sharing of all experimental artifacts and data. Agreeing as a computer science community, uh, standards and formats for the reporting of results. And really just educating researchers, authors and reviewers on sort of the issues uh, that we are facing. And publishers have also been active in this regard. So ACM, for example, have a scheme for recognizing uh, where studies meet the criteria of being repeatable, uh, reproducible, or replicable. And they have a, as it were, a badging scheme uh, whereby they can um, authenticate, as it were, certain studies of having met some of these criteria. So about our uh, experiment. Initial work that we had done suggested that dyslexia was not a detrimental condition 
in relation to the reading of program code. One of the questions to emerge, however, was if code layout was poor, in particular if it was crowded, would this disproportionately affect programmers with dyslexia? And that's the, the focus of our current work. Some comments on then how the experiment was uh, designed or set up. Participants were exposed to three small Java programs uh, doing simple arithmetic and data manipulation in combinations of either a spaced or a crowded layout. We managed to recruit 30 participants, um, 14 in the dyslexia group, 16 in the control group, um, and this allows for or this resulted in the breakdown as shown across control group and program type. And just for completeness to note the hardware setup, um, we were using Adobe X3 and there's some details in the paper about our font sizes and so on. Just to, to look in a bit more detail at how we differentiated between a spaced and a crowded program. You know, and there could be a lot of debate around this. Um, rather than go for extremes of crowding and extremes of spacing, we tried to have distinctions which, which were realistic, which might be found in, in real world coding. And we have primarily, or we have introduced spacing through vertical spacing between lines of code or between logical uh, groupings of code. And the other highlighting in this slide is showing our areas of interest. So the data set, um, as I say, it's available on Figshare and this graphic is just showing us um, the logic, logical arrangement of the files that are available. And I'll go through uh, some of these over the next few slides. There is a participant data file, which for each participant, um, 30 participants uh, record some um, sort of profile data. So without going through the detail of the file, um, on this slide, uh, just to summarize, data such as age and gender and programming experience. For each program that they were presented with, their comprehension performance, viewing time, and also some other configuration data such as accuracy and, pre and precision per participant. The Toby session we have then exported as a TSV file. So this is a file per participant recording every gaze event in the session with timestamp, um, eye coordinates, uh, fixa or eye movement type, and any AOI hits and so on. So depending on the session duration, uh, file sizes ranging from about 20 up to about 70 megabytes. For each program type, we have made available the full set of Toby metrics uh, for each AOI. We also have some uh, folders presenting visualizations. So for each participant's um, gaze per program, we have a .mp4 file uh, showing the gaze plot. And then we have the averages as presented in a heat map, uh, fixation, duration, and counts uh, per program type. Um, and then also broken down into the dyslexia and the control grouping. 
Um, in terms of AOIs, one of the things we have presented in the paper is some of the decisions or evaluating some of the decisions that as researchers we have to make when defining AOIs and possibly the impact that this will have on the quality of our data. We evaluated what would happen in terms of gaze, um, hits, um, if we adopted a strict AOI arrangement, as we have called it. A forgiving AOI arrangement is where there's a bit of uh, a buffer um, either side or around the, the feature and then a maximum AOI configuration where the area of interest is as large reasonably as it possibly can be uh, before it begins to overlap with a neighboring AOI. And you know we went for the forgiving arrangement as we have called it because it was the one which um, in terms of the data uh, was allowing us to distinguish between program features without overlapping um, onto potentially neighboring AOIs. Uh, for completeness, just to make some comment on our experimental uh, results. So what we were kind of hypothesizing was that for a given feature line of code, for example, um, that there might be, uh, for example, differences in visit duration across the spaced or crowded version, or they might be similar, but that the difference in differences between the control and the dyslexia group would be broadly the same. So what we were looking for, therefore, were cases where it was not, where there was a significant difference um, in the difference between the two groups. And, you know, our, with an ICPC paper, uh, and we will hopefully do more work on this, uh, but our position so far seems to be that the number of occasions where we did see the significant difference in differences is really quite small. Um, and again, is not an emerging pattern that the dyslexia group is manifesting. So in terms of our experiment and the research question, um, so far, it again seems that there is no disproportionate deficiency in how a programmer will, with dyslexia will perform when reading a crowded program or a crowded layout compared to a programmer without dyslexia. There are still things we need to do. Uh, our analysis has been looking at the interaction effect of program type and programmer type, um, but I think we do have enough data where we can still study the main effects. We have to look at how gaze, linear gaze or nonlinear gaze might be affected across program types, um, and there are other questions that we're still um, deliberating. But to make some conclusions on the data set, as it were, which is what we've been trying to focus on in this paper. Um, stating the obvious, I think, uh, there are many benefits to sharing open data sets and computer science research. And uh, many of you in this community are doing that already. And our observations and recommendations would be, for example, the following. Uh, make sure you get ethical approval to share at the outset as well as sharing raw data, include some of the derived artifacts, such as visualizations. This can help lower barriers to access. You know, and try to be explicit about the experimental design decisions that have been made. Um, so thank you um, for listening.